City. It is a gorgeous day. Temperatures expected to climb near 60 degrees. Northwestern won the toss but has deferred. So Iowa will receive the football first. And a little trickery off the bat. Northwestern trying the onside kick and it goes against them. Iowa gets the football and will have it in terrific field position. That's Sean Considine with the big play. First year starter Brad Banks leads the country in passing efficiency. He does have 20 touchdown passes, just four interceptions. Freddie Russell back in the lineup, sat out last week against Wisconsin after he jammed his right hand in the win over Michigan the week before. The offensive line for the Hawkeyes, over 150 starts between them. I talked to four NFL scouts on the field before the game. This is the best offensive line in the country along with the Georgia Bulldogs. Stop penetration, that's his deep alignment there. So now on third and 15, Banks all the time in the world looking and finding for a first down. Maurice Brown, the junior from Fort Lauderdale, giving up 40 points per game. Lewis, quick, into the end zone, touchdown, Hawkeyes. You know, I made the statement that this could be one of the two best offensive lines in the country, and you'll see why right here is guys are pulling, blowing people off the ball. Watch 72, finish blocks. See, guys are on their back. When you get grass stains on your back in the first drive, it can't be for a long day. It's so a that, great job of the offensive line coming off the ball. Just blowing them off, Nate Kading in to add the extra point. So Randy Walker gambled on the opening kickoff with the onside kick. Iowa got it in good field position, and they punch it in. Jamel Lewis takes it in for the quick score. Hawkeyes defensive line devastating. Colin Cole and Howard Hodges, seven sacks apiece. The Iowa linebackers, middle linebacker Fred Barr leads the Hawkeyes in tackles. Grant Steen has gone from being a walk-on to a starter on the outside. And Derek Pagel has four of Iowa's 15 interceptions. Bob Sanders, a playmaker. Yeah, if you get a big hit and you're on Iowa defense, it's called a Sanders. That's respect. <laughs> Fourth and less than a yard in their own territory, and they're throwing it right. Caught in the backfield, he goes down. Fred Barr, the middle backer, snuffed it out. All right, Rob, an unusual call, certainly throwing the ball backwards like that when you only need a little half-yard uh, gain. Max rolling out. He's got his receiver, Brown, at the end zone. Another touchdown for the Hawkeyes. Reese Brown on the post. Iowa, two possessions and two touchdowns as Kading knocks home the extra point. Maurice Brown, 107 yards worth of catches last week against Wisconsin. He gets 40 yards on this one and another Hawkeye score. Almost had a fourth. Bazinet into the end zone, clear nice and free touchdown Ashton Akins. That's always the rumor hanging around, isn't it? Banks completes it to C.J. Jones, his cousin, and the cousin connection connects for about five. Not surprising, considering that Northwestern is dead last in rush defense in the Big Ten. That is a completion to Maurice Brown. Now third and seven. Banks takes off on his own, looking for the end zone, and he walks in. Another Iowa touchdown. First year starter, Kading. Now three for three in extra points. So Iowa with the drive that ate up well over five minutes. Cap it off with Brad Banks playing his last game here at Kinnick. And he's got himself a touchdown. At that time, there was no edge. The play comes back. And Banks on first down throws it up for Brown, who got behind the secondary. And Brown off to the end zone. No flags. Touchdown, Iowa. Well, it's, it's too easy. I, I mean, what do you say? They, they run a bootleg right, they complete it. Bootleg left, they complete it. And he throws the ball high, so Maurice Brown can run underneath it. And what I like, this is awareness on the field. He makes a catch, makes a great cut, and shows great speed, finishing the play, getting in the end zone. 
65 yard play ties the season high for Maurice Brown as he beat Dominic Price. Kading's extra point is good. Price is a guy who missed the last two games because of a sprained ankle, and that time he could not keep up with Maurice Brown. Iowa extends its lead to now 28 to 7. Something that Jenkins could give them down here, but they're going with Bazinet. That ball is tipped away, looking for Schweigert, but Bob Sanders made the play. And this one right in the middle of the field, and the drought has ended. Barrett's did when he was his old line coach under Fry. Russell breaking free into the Northwestern secondary. First down, dragged down at the 40. In-state rivalry games. Russell again, showing the speed. Boy, he burst through there, down into Northwestern territory. 18 more for Fred. 55 yards and counting for Russell with that. His Banks appears to be changing things up at the line. Russell, huge hole right up the gut of that Northwestern defense. Another Iowa first down. Lewis in motion. The running back now split wide to the right as a receiver. Banks going underneath to his tight end, Dallas Clark. And they are very successful, obviously, this year. Just the one loss. Banks taking it himself towards the end zone. Two rushing touchdowns for the senior. He's making a strong case to get his name on the Eisman list. He's getting up there. A lot of people like him. Here's Kading. Fifth extra point try this afternoon. And he's a solid kicker for these Iowa Hawkeyes. The lead is up to 35 to 10. As Brad Banks saying goodbye to playing in Iowa City in grand style. Brad Banks has been just about perfect for Iowa. Touchdown pass, he found Maurice Brown. And then two touchdown runs. He's seven for seven through the air, Chris. Four touchdowns total, 197 yards of total offense. Well, you know, coming into the game, he was number one in the Big Ten in total offense, number one in quarterback efficiency. And like you said, four rushes for 45 yards, that's efficient. Seven for seven for 152 <laughs> yards, that's efficient. A total of 197 yards and four TDs, that's very efficient. So that, Built. That's awesome. Great performance so far by Brad Banks. And he is a senior from Florida, making yeah. his last start from Belgrade, Florida. They found him looking for somebody yeah. else. They found him by accident. They're at the junior college recruiting a defensive lineman. The coach says, hey, you might want to take a look at his quarterback. And, and Kirk said, yeah, I, I think I will take a look at his quarterback. <laughs> and they were able to convince him to come here to Iowa City and play for the Hawkeyes. It is amazing how some guys kind of slip away. And Brad Banks has been a terrific find for the Hawks. Perhaps the last play of the first half, Bazinet, that is picked off, intercepted by Scott Bolin, and that will end the first half. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Saturn Halftime Report. Matt Weiner and Mark May, senior day in Iowa City, and the senior Brad Banks putting on a show for the home folks. Outstanding day watching his first half. He's been terrific, not only throwing the football or warning the football, and you can see why, that he's a Big Ten leader in total offense, but I talked about him a few weeks ago being a Heisman Trophy contender. He is. He should be a Heisman Trophy candidate. He's, in my mind, he's probably one of the top two or three players in the country. And if you're looking at a Heisman Trophy candidate, you've got to say the best players in the country, Brad Banks is one of them. Remember that name, Brad Banks should be the Heisman Trophy finalist, without a doubt, in my mind. Best run defense in the United States of America, and they're showing it today. Jason Wright feels a lot of Hawkeyes on his back. Kloss among those, right on top of him. They have done a terrific job, not just today, but all season long. And this time, they get a sack. Matt Roth with his eighth sack of the season. That leads Iowa. Uh, he, he's their fifth defense lineman that they bring in, that they alternate with. And Matt Roth, not the over overpowering guy, but he played linebacker last year. And he said, well, Matt, you're more of a pass rusher. There he gets his hands inside. He comes with a swim move and finishes the play. Yeah. It's anybody's game. Thank you, Rob, as Brian Huffman comes in, just his second punt of the day. That's a skyscraper to Ed Hinkle, who takes it at his 43 and then breaks away. Hinkle, one guy to beat, and he does it. Hinkle takes it all the way for a Hawkeye touchdown. They 
game dominated on offense, defense, and now special teams just taking over. Hinkle setting up his blocks, finding a way to get in the end zone, showing great speed, and again, the ability to finish. A career-long 58-yard punt return, first touchdown scored by the freshman from Erie. Kading, six for six on extra points. So Ed Hinkle collecting this putt from Brian Huffman, and then he's just off to the races. Iowa's offense doesn't have the ball yet in the first half, and they still get a score. Claus will be back next year. He is only a junior. And that is incomplete, going for Mark Fillmore. Good coverage by Bob Sanders. They're hoping for a Rose Bowl here uh, for, uh, for this Iowa football team. That is certainly up in the air. Fred Russell was faked to as Banks got it up in the air to Maurice Brown. That strength of schedule stuff uh, comes into play. The opponents who beat you, you want them to keep on winning. Banks gets around the corner, is dragged down by McGarrigal, a true freshman from Chicago who has five tackles today. Second and one, play fake. Banks up top, completes it to Eric Jensen, the backup tight end from Wisconsin. Appleton, Wisconsin, eight yard game. Banks now nine for nine, Chris, through the air with a couple of touchdown passes. Make it 10 for 10, Dallas Clark, his other tight end drags Sparks into the end zone. Touchdown, Hawkeyes. See, Dallas Clark will come down and see Brad Banks. Dallas Clark pushes off, runs the route to the inside, then again, a great move, and gets into the end zone. Clark's fourth touchdown catch of the season. Kading getting a workout with that right leg, knocks it home. For Trev Alberts, back in the studio, he loves Dallas Clark. I think he's going to be talking about this play later on tonight. There you go, 10 for 10, 197, three man. That's efficient, and that's why he's the most efficient quarterback in the Big Ten. <laughs> Russell did come back in after the curtain call and picks up a whole lot more. Finally scooched out of bounds at the 22-yard line, but that's 21 more yards for Freddie. And they're giving him breaks. Amir Lewis now is in there. Chandler on the roll. Good catch as Jones got his hands on it. Gathered it in, tiptoes down the sideline for the touchdown. Well, when, you, when you're effective running the ball, you can throw bootlegs all day. C.J. Jones does a good job of bringing the ball in with his hands and this is what I like a lot of receivers you'll see will be tight rope in the sidelines avoid the hit step out but no I need six he goes and gets six and that is Nathan Chandler's first career touchdown pass here at the University of Iowa Nate Caden extra points coming easy to him as Chandler gets his first career touchdown pass for the Juco transfer Finding C.J. Jones, and Iowa has a huge lead. Jenkins, time, tipped, and intercepted. Jonathan Babineau with the pick. This is a great thing going on right now because the whole offensive line is coming off the field together. Take a look at that, that's awesome. They're holding their hands, they've been through the struggles. They were on a one and 10 football team, 0 and 8 in the Big Ten. They were, they were belittled, they're saying they're the problem. Here they are coming off the field, their final day in Kinnick Stadium triumphantly. Awesome. As a team, as a unit, that's great. It's a good chance to get some of your young guys the, the opportunity to play here, let them run their plays. Lewis, nice move. Inside, outside, another first down for the Hawkeyes. He is tackled down at the 16. The third quarter now in the books in Iowa City, 56 to 10 Iowa. The offensive line getting a very well-deserved final curtain call at Kinnick. Nate 
Nathan Chandler. Third and ten. Blitz retreats, finds Aaron Mickens, the fullback. And Mickens down close. He has a first down, Rob Stone. Well, you, you see your home team putting up the big points and Ohio State stumbling. Even though you're not playing anymore, that still has to be a special buzz as Iowa closes in on potential Rose Bowl. As a guy that grew up here in the shadows of Kinnick Stadium in West Branch, Iowa, and, and to be able to play here and, and to watch Iowa come back and have great success has just been a great treat. I will ask Chris the 87 game in Columbus. I don't know if he remembers that or not, but he, he remembers yeah. it. He was telling me as I was walking up getting you. This, uh, <laughs> this team's had a lot of games like that. Uh, Purdue this year, fourth down at Dallas Park. It, it's a great, great football team, and I just hope you know great things come the rest of that next three, four weeks. Now. Marcus Schnoor, redshirt freshman from DeWitt, Iowa, and look who's kicking the extra point. It is not the regular kicker, Nate Caden. It's Nathan Chandler's number. It's blocked. And Northwestern, Raheem Covington can't pick it up on the fly. Warren Howard, a defensive end by trade, picked it up. So they bring in another guy to kick it. It doesn't quite work, but they're still up by 52. With the win today, Iowa will go to 10 wins for only the fourth time in its history. Jenkins, in, intercepted by Scott Bolin, his second of the day. From right here in Iowa City, a senior getting some playing wow. time. And they're talking Heisman. Only one Iowa Hawkeye has ever won the Heisman. And that was the guy they named the stadium after. Niall yeah. Kinnick won it in 1939. Will Brad Banks be number yeah, two? And welcome back to our college football studios. College game day now presented by Acura with Mark May. I'm Matt Weiner, and Iowa puts up 62 points on Northwestern. They scored in their very first possession of the touchdown, and they just kept on scoring, and the Hawkeyes look better and better each week.